quickly they've moved to move everything online and virtual and how much information they're sharing with us. Uh, I'm really to learn the best of the best and uh, yeah, excited to share some information that we've been talking about. Yeah, so this is all just like fresh, hot off the press. Um, gotta get my glasses on here. I wanna see what we got here. All right, so I'm gonna share the screen so we can pull this up, man. So local market conditions. This is kind of across the country in different metropolitan area areas. areas. Um, gosh, look mm -hmm. at the sales and then the inventory, but the pricing's up, right? So the inventory's down, the pricing's up. Um, Look at Miami, my goodness. Down 15% yeah. with inventory. Prices, pricing's up 8.4%. We have a lot of friends that sell there, so that's really interesting. Let's um, flip mm -hmm. back. Look at the months of inventory. So this is the, the national 3.1 months of inventory. I mean, no. Just so everyone knows um, and kind of has a, a baseline of what that means, you know, the experts say that five to six months of inventory is a balanced market. Anything less than that is a seller's market. So, and we're definitely feeling those effects in our business, right? I mean, listings are gone almost the moment we put them on market. Or right. I mean, we're, we're at much lower inventory right now. We've been talking about this for weeks, so hopefully we don't bore too many people, but um, there's some other great slides in here. Let's see. Now this is um, year over year change in price. I mean, this is, look at, uh, it's average year over year change in price in 2020. Look from January to July. That's pretty incredible. And look at the interest rate. Now it's gone from 3.62 down to 3.02. So we have great pricing for sellers, but we also have great interest rates for buyers. So we're not feeling um, the effects right now with the pandemic, right? We had a couple of weeks in the beginning of Sarasota people trying to figure out what's going on. The restaurants closed down. So we did the Feed a Healthcare Hero to help um, feed hospital workers. And they were working around the clock just in preparation, not knowing what was gonna happen. And then obviously the restaurant shut down. Well, our restaurants are 50% now. Um, bars just opened up, which they've been closed down for a while, but real estate is still selling, um, relatively low cases in our area. Thank goodness. Uh, we're really, really fortunate, but yeah, this is, um, just interesting to see the pricing from January through July. Yeah. And it, it appears that overall real estate is kind of like a, a bright sunny spot in our economy as a whole, uh, yeah. right now across the board, which is, you know, we're really thankful for. Yeah. Look at the home sales here from 2019 to 2020. That's why a lot of our friends and of course, um, people in our office are having some of the best years, right? We, we hear it from not just us, how, how busy we are. And, um, of course, we do feel guilty sometimes talking about that because in some other areas in big cities with these uh, condos that are high rises, sometimes they're not experiencing the same thing. Um, but you can see nationally everything, the home sales are up compared to last year. So we really just need to find ways for buyers to know they can get deals in some of these cities that they can ordinarily never live in. And once mm -hmm. a vaccine comes out, obviously they'll be able to go back to work. And then of course, we always have a second home. You can stay here in Florida while you're waiting for that. Maybe not even buy a full-time home here as a permanent purchase, but a second home that you can rent out when you're not here and um, certainly help kind of cover the cost of that vacation home. Um, this is the GDP. So this is really, really interesting. Obviously, we want to be really mindful of this as we watch everything with COVID. You can see from 2008 to 2009, that was the last major dip. And now you can see this is the estimation for um, 2020. Obviously, we're not at the end of the year. Wow. And then this is, this is really interesting with Q2 uh, GDP, negative 30. I mean, I don't think anyone's ever seen this in the history. So we just have to be you know, things are good, right? We're selling a lot of real estate in Florida, but you just want to be mindful of what's actually going on. And then the reason why I think we're not feeling the effects in Florida, you know, homes are still selling, you're in multiple offer situations with your buyers. 
is because most people are over the age of 35 that are traditionally buying a second home and that's a big market for us and you can see um, that's a big piece of the housing market in general is just um, that that age group and then um, this is just talking about unemployment and earnings I, I think you know that a lot of people in the hospitality and the leisure industry are unemployed we're seeing a lot of uh, those people come into real estate so I always say as real estate agents maybe owners of brokerages reach out and um, maybe they're unemployed right now they're collecting unemployment that might not last forever um, you and I have worked in the hospitality industry Dayton's come from hospitality um, a lot of really good agents I know are servant leaders and they love to serve and so it's a great opportunity to hire some talent um, I was just talking to Dayton and a friend of ours, Alex Crum, used to work with him, him and his wife, and they have their own brokerage right now in Sarasota. Um, they're not part of the KW family, but they're just super intelligent, um, really have a servant leader heart, him and his wife. And so, you know, this could be a time to reach out to people, you know, and I know you know a lot of people in the hospitality industry that we could probably help. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. So it could be a good way to help them um, find their, their niche in real estate. And then this is um, not to scare everyone, but it does show you know the, the similarities, right? We have a higher unemployment right now, or we did in April at 14.7, now we're at 8.4%, um, and it peaked at 10% in October 2009. And that's when we were really feeling the effects of what we started to see in Florida in 2006. So um, obviously we don't know what's gonna happen, Right now, we just know it's a great time to sell your home. There is low inventory, the pricing is high, and um, there's a lot of indicators showing this is, this is really when they should sell. Um, any ahas from today, Megan, that you wanna share? Yeah, you know, um, I don't know if you want me to touch on months of inventory first, but uh, you know, we've looked at the trends over time from 1999, to only four months in that entire 17 year span had below four months of inventory right and we we saw to go the word in it's at 3.1 months um cumulatively and then yeah. from 2017 to 2020 and 20 months that showed below four months inventory so quite a change that we're seeing right there um Another statistic that we're really looking at is just the number of people that went into forbearance. And the experts are saying that 7% of all homeowners in America and 3% of, of the homeowners are at their 90 days in forbearance. Yeah. So, uh, you know, oh, I may be having technical difficulties. You froze yeah. up a moment there. No, that's okay. You, um, I don't know if it's your computer or mine, but you, you kind of froze up a little bit. So I'm just going to repeat that. So um, I believe you said from 2000, or 1999 to 2000, was that correct? Yeah, 2016. Okay, so from 1999 to 2016, there were only four months that had shown less than four months of inventory over that period of time, that given period of time. And then from 2010, you said from to 20, um, 20, there were only there were 20 months. So that's a lot. Yeah. That's way more. So you can see what's going on. Right. Yeah. Definitely. So and uh, you know, how people they are in mortgage and need to sell their home uh, so that they don't have a bankruptcy or something like that on their credit. Um, you know, maybe we put them in a rent rental short term, you know, and just help them out through these difficult times. And then other homeowners, you know, may be able to re recover from this. Hopefully people are getting back to work and, um, you know, we're all in this together. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously we have a lot of training in short sales, so we're going to, you know, make sure that everyone we know that's near and dear, all of our clients, anyone that might be in the hospitality industry or, um, or in any of these areas we saw on that graph that are, unemployed that we're going to be in constant communication so we can help save their credit should they get in that position and um, I believe we've built enough trust where they know you know we'll be able to help them through that so basically I think the next thing we'll show here I'm going to reshare my screen is 
people want to know, you know, what to expect. This is just something Gary Keller was talking about during Mega Camp. You'll see an Inman article probably share some of this here in a few minutes. It'll be circling the internet, but we wanted to bring this to you live, some of the information we receive. So stage one, housing markets in a K-shaped uh, recovery. The owner-occupied market will continue to see strong demand, uh, low interest rates, income for earners, and income ranges typically for homeowners remain stable. Sales may be limited by low inventory, which is what we're experiencing. Number two, potential stumbling blocks in the investment market. Renters begin to struggle, leading to missed rent due to high unemployment in service and retail industries. So that's part of our area of rental properties. Um, I know with some of my renters, thank goodness, um, you know, they're in industries where they, th those services are needed right now. And then one is actually retired. So, um, you know, he's in a position where he doesn't have to work. So that's unfortunate in that respect. But I think you're going to see possibly some missed rent, depending on when the unemployment uh, stops or their whatever they received, right, stimulus. Could uh, push rents down also. Loss of cash flow could lead to more rental properties going up for sale and a potential shift from income to owner-occupied properties. Institutional investors may move in and concentrate rental market further. So that, that could happen. And this kind of shows that uh, K-shaped recovery that Gary was talking about. And then stage two. So um, housing markets and a more traditional recovery. We will likely see negative impact on other parts of the economy and recovery will slow. The pandemic is a very unique situation. I think we've all discovered that and timing on its resolution is very uncertain, obviously without knowing when we'll have a vaccine. Recovery in the meantime is slow and the impacts of lower consumer spending will cause unemployment to rise and industries currently doing better than average. Demand for purchasing homes will slow with, when demographic groups typical of home ownership begin to be negatively impacted and prices are likely to continue to grow as a result of low inventory and low mortgage rates. So the demand will begin to recover as unemployment recovers across the economy. The impetus for this will likely be resolution of the pandemic through a vaccine. So um, hopefully, right, uh, that will happen and um, everything will be good. So what could go wrong? I think you touched on this. You know, we're gonna have to really be mindful to help our clients or anyone we know um, in a forbearance situation, maybe when that period is, um, you know, system that has a given a maximum forbearance of 12 months, when that's up, will they need our assistance uh, to act as a fiduciary, represent them as a single agent in a short sell? Um, this system works under the assumption that within 12 months, most borrowers will have regained employment and be eligible for restructuring. So I'm hoping that everyone's putting their money away if they are choosing to go through the forbearance process. Um, hopefully they're being really mindful with their money and hopefully just doing everything they can to prepare to come out on the other side of that 12 months in a really good position. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, Megan, any last ahas or anything you wanna share? Oh, well, just a, a couple things from um, Gary Keller and he, you know like we talked about earlier he's interviewing a lot of really amazing people um, you know sometimes we tend to underestimate the short-term effects you know whether they're good or bad we, we kind of under underestimate that but we also underestimate the long-term effects so you know just being mindful and keeping an eye on things keeping an eye on the market uh, talk to your advisors and consultants now you know, don't wait, ask questions now, stay in touch now. It should, should people move or take some action? It's better to have all the information now rather than be scrambling in the 23rd hour. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, we always build the trust with our clients so they can reach out to us no matter what, you know, what kind of situation they're in. It's, it's a really strong market right now. So, if anyone is at all even thinking about selling, you can kind of see this is the time. Pricing is good. The buyers have low interest rates. It's, it's a really good situation for all parties and we'd love to help. So um, you can reach us on our ta team line at 941-404-4737. If you would like uh, these slides emailed to you, you can send me an email at brandycoffee at thecoffeegroup.com. And uh, they can reach Megan, right? Megan West at thecoffeegroup.com. And her name is spelled M-E-A-G-A-N. Thanks, Brandy. Yeah. Do you want to leave your cell phone too, just in case anyone, any of your clients want to text you directly? 
if he wants to text message or call me, yeah, call me directly, you can reach me at 941-402-7012. All right, awesome. Well, okay. hopefully Thanks. this information is helpful and um, we'll be sharing more statistics as we get them, right? Yes, absolutely. All right, everyone. Have a Thanks, great everybody. day. Everybody.